dear friends uh, happy weekend we are in the first day of the weekend saturday so i'm relaxed and i'm sure you are relaxed too so to start a little longish chat with you but today i think the chat is going to be interesting i'm sitting in my garden if you just want to see i am basically uh, surrounded by greenery all over but i live quite beside a railway line and a uh, motorway the gt road so uh, you could often hear sounds of trains or even trucks sometimes don't mind that interruption of the sounds you can hear bird chirping at the back i'm sitting all admits in nature all the sides i see it's green all around so that's kind of lovely and uh, uh, if you want to see the greenery maybe i should as a part of my uh, video you can see it's green all around so i decided why not sit here and do something new every uh, discussion that i do with you which appears even non technical is some sense technical it also talks about math and uh, what i want to um, discuss here today is today i want to take you into a very different world a fan fantasy world a fantastic world into the world of logic puzzles let me just begin by reading about the life of a amazing mathematical logician from this book called mathematical people profiles and interviews by albers and alexanderson who edited this volume and this was a series of interviews of mathematicians taken way back in the 19 mid 1980s but let me just uh, read something to you and hope you won't mind now suppose it's kind of thing that you are in this roman empire and a prisoner has been bought now he has to be given some uh, punishment and he is taken in there's a huge crowd now he is taken and kept in front of two doors two doors are closed and he's been told in one of these rooms behind the doors is a beautiful lady another is a hungry tiger so if you open the door which has the lady you get to marry the lady and if you don't open the door of the lady and open that of the tiger you know what will happen to you the idea now is how would he given two notices or two writings on the two doors looking at those two he has to decide which one has the lady and which one has the tiger so room number 1 it is written in this room there is a lady and in the other room there is a tiger and room number 2 it is written in one of these rooms there is a lady in one of these rooms there is a tiger now can the prisoner save himself means open the door which has the lady don't hurry don't hurry to answer it don't make an arbit choice sit down and think about it i am again telling you the room one says in this room there is a lady and in the other room there is a tiger room two says one of these rooms there is a lady and one of these rooms there is a tiger so you have to discuss by taking the truth value and falsity of each statement and see what conclusion comes be careful do not hurry solution would be given in the next uh, mathematical puzzles chapter but do not hurry if you have missed what i have said for them for the third and last time room 1 reads in this room there is a lady and in the other room there is a tiger room 2 reads one of these rooms there is a 
lady and, and in one of these rooms there is a tiger. Think of yourself as a prisoner and you are given enough time for example to think and decide. Do not hurry. If you hurry, tiger may be out rather than the lady and, and we all know what people would want. So, here begins the ballad or a saga of the great logician and mathematician Ray Smullyan who is sometimes viewed as the Lewis Carroll of our times. Lewis Carroll the famous writer of Alice in Wonderland whose actual name was Charles Dodson was a professor of mathematics at Oxford and he under the pseudonym Lewis Carroll not only wrote that famous Alice in Wonderland but also wrote a very fantastic book on mathematical puzzles. So, I thought that look, looking into my collection of mathematical puzzle books maybe I should share some of, some of these. So, my first introduction to Raymond Smullivan was with a book called what is the name of this book. Please understand that, but this is not the book which I originally saw. I saw it in a book fair in Delhi long back in the 90s. I bought one copy, but that somehow was lost. Then I had to rebuy the Dover uh, publication copy, the Dover one. Now, Raymond Smullyan is an amazing guy, a high school dropout who self taught himself, who spent uh, his life, uh, a good part of his uh, early uh, career showing magic in. Chicago nightclubs, a musician of great caliber, a mathematician of great caliber, an astronomer who did not actually could have gone and researched in astronomy. Such a person gave a lot of his life, he lived up to the ripe old age of 97 into thinking about creating logical puzzles. But at heart of all those logical puzzles was the famous Gödel's incompleteness theorem which says that given any system of logic, there would always be a proposition which cannot be proved true or false under the rules of that logic. So, which means no mathematical system or formal system can ever be complete because logicians aim for a system in which whatever be a given a statement is truth or falsity can be decided by within that rules of that logical system. But that is what Goedel proved that that is not possible. So, this is a very famous result might look slightly paradoxical that he is using logic to prove that logic is incomplete. But he used a system of logic is our current system of logic and in that system he could show that this will happen. So, logic might look very obstruse, mathematical logic as a subject would look very obstruse, very few people would do it. Computer scientists would be obviously interested nowadays, but as a mathematical subject it would look very dry. But what Smullyan did was to take a person with no interest in mathematical logic even in mathematics to build in some stories about logic puzzles and bring an interest in the subject. I remember when I got this book, the name of the book is what is the name of this book? The Riddles of Dr Dracula and Other Logic Puzzles by Raymond Smullyan. When I was reading this book, I used to try out the puzzles and at the end when I used to keep on trying and at the end I found myself laughing out very hard. I was laughing, laughing and laughing. It is so much, so much fun. So, let me start out with one of the first puzzles or a statement. So, here is a small write, small write up by Smullyan was he asks the reader was I fooled? Now, here is the story. My introduction to logic was at the age of 6. It happened this way. On April 1, 1925, I was sick in bed with grip or flu or something like that. In the morning, my brother Emily, 10 years my senior, came into my bedroom and said, Well, Raymond, today is April Fool's Day and I will fool you as you have never been fooled before. I waited all day long for him to fool me, but he did not come at all. Late that night, my mother asked me, why do not you go to sleep? I replied, I am waiting for Emile to fool me. 
My mother turned to Emily and said, Emily, will you please fool the child? Emily then turned to me and the following dialogue ensued. Emily, so his brother, elder brother is telling, so you expect me to fool you, didn't you? Raymond said, yes. Emily said, but I didn't, did I? Raymond said, no. But you expected me to, didn't you? Raymond said, yes. So Emily said, so I fooled you, didn't I? When I recall lying in bed long after the lights were turned out, wondering whether or not I had really been fooled. On one hand, if I wasn't fooled, then I did not get what I expected. On one hand, if I was not fooled, I did not get what I expected, so I was fooled. That was his brother's argument. But with equal reason, it can be said that if I was fooled, then I did get what I expected. So then, in what sense I was fooled? So I was fooled or wasn't I? Immediately I am sure your head has turned, your head turns to spin. My head also does every time I read it. So let us read it again. On one hand, if I wasn't fooled, then I did not get what I expected. And hence I was fooled. That is what his brother's argument was. But with equal reason it can be said that if I was fooled, then I did get what I expected. So in what sense then I was fooled? So there must be a sense in which I was fooled. According to his brother, because he was expecting to be fooled and he was not fooled and hence he was fooled. But he says that if I was really fooled, so I got what I expected and then what sense then I was actually fooled. So this uh, puzzle is actually basis for uh, a later book which he wrote. Unfortunately, I do not have a copy of that book called Forever Undecided. It will be very difficult to decide on whether he was fooled or not. For example, if I give you two cards and place them one below the other. In the card, top card, it was written, the sentence in the card below is false. And in the other card below, the second card, it is written in the sentence in the card above is true. Now, which is true and which is false? So, logic is filled with all these paradoxes and that is what makes it interesting. My favorite group of puzzles in this book, what is the name of this book? Is the story of knights and knaves. So, there is an island which are filled with two kinds of inhabitants, knights and knaves. So, knights in th are those guys who are always telling the truth, while knaves are those guys who are always lying. Okay. It is assumed that every person in that island is either a knight or a knave. So, here is the first puzzle, note it down carefully and try to solve it, do not hurry at all. According to this old problem, three of the inhabitants A, B and C were standing together in a garden. A stranger passed by and asked A, are you a knight or a knave? A answered but rather indistinctly. So, the stranger could not make out what he said. The stranger then asked B, what did A say? B replied, A said that he is a knave. Knave is somebody who lies always. At this point, the third man C said, do not believe B, he is lying. The question is, what are B and C? Is B a knight or a knave or C is knight or a knave? So again, so this will be answered in our next set of puzzle, when we will celebrate the puzzles, maybe within a day or two we will put out the answers. So a stranger, maybe a visitor, maybe A. Smulian himself comes to the island and he meets three people from that island, A, B and C standing together in a garden. So a stranger passed by and asked him, is Smulian for example, he passed by or you yourself passed by and asked A, are you a knight or a knave? A answered, 
but rather indistinctly so the stranger could not make out what he said the stranger then asked b what did a say b replied a say that he is a knave at this point the third man c said don't believe b he is lying the question is what is b and c so there are many other books he had written few i have in my collection one is the one which i had just spoken the lady or the tiger and other logic puzzles a beautiful this it's, it's it's available in amazon in india i do not have all his books but some of his very beautiful books king arthur in search of his dogs and other curious puzzle and the most difficult of his, see, all his puzzles books he is ultimately taking into the heart of the goedelian principle of incompleteness so here is the goedelian puzzle book it's a very very funny book you will start laughing at many many things but at the end second part of the book he actually tries to prove goedelian theorem and that part becomes hard i i would agree that i couldn't finish it through so because it takes a lot of time then then you really have to leave all your work and sit down with it but otherwise the first part is something you laugh 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 and laugh okay so we will take this up gradually another mind boggling book i had is of raymond smullyan is saturn cantor and infinity here you will really learn beautifully about finite sets and infinite sets about countability and uncountability and there's a story here it seems there's a student there was an exam going on and a student was asked to prove the pythagoras theorem so when his answers come out he gets zero so he asks the teacher why did you give me zero he said okay you didn't write the proof which i have taught you in the class he said please note he asks told the teacher that all the things that you have taught us in geometry about circles triangles squares rhombus you told relationships between various things but you never defined me what is a proof then how can you say that what i did in that paper what i wrote down is not really a proof when you have never defined to me what is a proof Raymond Smullyan appreciates the boy. So uh, there are a lot of stories like this filled with anecdotes, and you learn that there are several types of infinity which Cantor had come across. Uh, we can speak a bit more on this because I am somehow fascinated with what Cantor did. That set of natural numbers are countable, while the set of the collection of all subsets of natural numbers are not countable. So it looks slightly strange, but it is true. And mathematics gives you the reason. It is not that he only wrote puzzle books. Though you, these all these books are actually serious mathematics, disguised in the form of funny puzzles. But Ray Smullyan finally got his PhD from Princeton after a life of travel and trying out this college, that college. Sometimes dabbling in music, sometimes in philosophy, to the extent. that when he started teaching at one place university of chicago gave him a ba degree because he was a high school dropout he was taking a calculus course he was teaching a calculus course he had never taken so these are very out of the box lives it cannot be lived by everybody it might be very difficult in situations like ours in india where putting food on the platter is a, is a major issue in many many most of for most many of us so what i want to tell is that uh there are strange people in this world doing strange things and raymond smullyan was one of them but it was not that he was only writing puzzle books please he had a fantastic book which was dubbed as one of the best books of first order logic uh, on the basic logic is one of the best but a book he wrote later in his life which i think is absolutely superb can be read by anybody doing any work in mathematics engineering anything a large part of it can be read it's called beginner's guide to mathematical logic it's a new book published by dover not an old one dover publication actually uh, 
resurrects old masterpieces of mathematics, but this is a new one. It is published in 2013, few years before his death. There are many other books which I did not collect and for, I hope I will collect. And some of these, uh, whenever I have sat with his puzzles, I have kept on laughing, laughing and laughing. Now I end with another puzzle, the politician puzzle. In a, in a, in a Congress of politicians, there were 100 politicians attending. Some of them are crooked, some of them are nice. But only one information was available, that there is at least one honest politician. And if you take any pair of politicians, there is at least one of them who is surely crooked. So, how many are honest and how many are crooked? Think about it, do not hurry. Do not say 50, 50, 60, 40, something like that. Do not make an immediate jump. Think about them and tell it. Okay, if you do not want to waste time on the politician's puzzle, let me tell you. So, you know who there is an at least an honest politician. So, separate him out that this is the honest politician. Then take any other politician and pair with him. So, what the second condition says that given any pair of politicians, at least one of them is surely crooked. So, in this pair, I know that one of them is honest. So, the remaining one has to be crooked. So, you can pair the rest of the 99 with this guy and all of them would turn out to be crooked. So, there are 99 crooked politicians and one honest politician. Uh, please understand, in I, uh, this is not a political statement. Please, please, please do not troll me for all these things. This is not a political statement. This is a puzzle of uh, Raymond Smulian. It is a funny puzzle and I am just telling a puzzle. I am not making any political statement. I am giving a disclaimer because I am now afraid of getting unnecessarily trolled for all this by using the word politician. So, uh, this is a funny puzzle because this, no, the, the whole idea is the argumentation. It is not question of politician. It could be a collection of scientists there are you could reward, rem, take the word politician of by scientists. Maybe that is better. But uh, it is the argumentation of the logic. This whole key idea as if you know that there is only one, one, at least one honest guy, find him and separate him out and then try to pair him with others and in all the pairs, all the guys who are coming must by the second condition must be dishonest and that is the idea. So, all of them can be actually figured out like this and think about these puzzles, do not worry too much, think about them slowly. Do not worry, there is a sound of a train coming. I am sure a big freight freight train with uh, pulled by a big electric locomotive. So, uh, whatever it is, I hope you enjoyed this Sunday, uh, sorry, Saturday discussion. My next uh, video would come up today only. In the evening, I uh, will tell you something. I will read a part of Newton's Principia to you from the preface only. And I will discuss Newton's Principia and influence of Euclid on him. And I hope you would enjoy that too. Thank you. Have a nice Saturday afternoon and enjoy yourselves. Bye.